you this evening, waiting for the system to let me know that, we're, that we are live. And we're almost there, it looks like. All right. Hey, folks, welcome back to another Micronutrient Monday. I know it's Tuesday, but last uh, yesterday afternoon, we got a little bit busy. So we're going to talk all about creatine today and the potential health benefits for young people, for pregnant women, for athletes, and for the elderly. There's a lot of benefits when it comes to creatine supplementation and creatine from foods. I want to talk about who creatine is for, especially vegans and vegetarians. And those of you that consume a lot of chicken, we know that chicken is not really a good source of creatine. Uh, red meat, poultry, I'm sorry, red meat, uh, pork, and also fish are really good sources of creatine, but not chicken. So if you eat a lot of chicken or eggs or egg whites, egg yolks, uh, or you know, you're know you vegan or vegetarian, you might want to continue to pay attention because we're going to dive further into this and also talk about creatine for the elderly when it comes to increasing muscle protein synthesis, recovering from exercise. A recently published meta-analysis of 28 different studies found that creatine supplementation in elderly adults can increase lean mass strength and improve various health-related parameters. So we are going to dive further into that just want to say, as always, thank you for being here. If at any point you're enjoying this content because you enjoy the science and the literature that we're talking about today, I would be so honored if you could hit that like button. Be sure to share this video with a friend via direct text message to let them know that we are live and we're talking all about creatine and taking your live questions. So uh, let's get right into it. I, I see there's a spell check that I might need to work on. So um, let's talk about this right here. Um, this was a recently published study that just came out in 2023 that highlights the mechanisms of creatine when it comes to specifically enhancing skeletal muscle performance. And I thought this was really interesting because creatine has been shown to increase glycogen resynthesis during athletics, change calcium kinetics, which is really important and might be one of the other mechanisms of action when it comes to creatine in the context of athletic performance and improving strength and possibly hypertrophy. Going on over the, to the right, you see ventil ventilatory threshold. So this might be uh, increasing oxygenation uptake and helping to decrease uh, carbon dioxide release. Also buffering of lactic acid over here on the left, the lower left-hand side, you see buffering of hydrogen ions and also um, some of the, the acids that are created by way of exercise and working muscle. Uh, possibly even decreasing inflammatory responses. Uh, there's a question mark here around mitochondrial biogenesis, and that's really important as you know, uh, your mitochondria, I think, uh, comprise uh, up to 15% of most people's body weight. Very important. So creatine might uh, impact the mitochondria. We know that creatine essentially serves as a phosphate buffer within the cell. So looking up over in the upper left-hand corner of this image, what you see here is creatine and phosphocreatine. When you increase your creatine levels, you're increasing your phosphocreatine reserve which helps to add more phosphate groups uh, as a reserve for working skeletal muscle, and that is important in muscular contraction. So a lot of really good evidence from this particular paper that we're going to talk about, as well as a study that I want to dive into, as I mentioned, 28, this was a, a systematic review of 28 uh, studies finding that creatine supplementation in elderly people can increase lean mass by up to two kilograms over the course of 16 weeks and also improve strength, which is very important for the elderly population. I'm sure you've heard of Dr. Peter Atia and many of his other podcasts. You know, elderly people are one fall away from their death, essentially, as he, these are his own words, not mine. Because essentially what happens is when elderly people trip and fall and have weakened muscles and they break a hip or break a leg or have, uh, they're bedridden from those injuries, that can increase or hasten um, their, their demise. And it's really important to maintain and preserve strength throughout lifespan. And that's uh, really important as well. Um, so let's dive into uh, some facts here. And we're going to talk about, uh, I think, some interesting mechanisms. I'll leave this on the slide here because I know many of you are, imp are, are, are keen on improving uh, muscle protein synthesis, maintaining muscle. We know muscle is a glucose and insulin and leptin sponge. Muscle is so important for metabolic health, for cardiovascular disease. Obviously, there's aesthetic components to muscle, uh, improving blood sugar regulation. But it turns out that creatine might block 
myostatin. And we know that myostatin can actually decrease muscle protein synthesis and hypertrophy. So it's a natural myostatin inhibitor. Uh, it might even increase insulin-like growth factor one and therefore improve muscle protein synthesis, which is just really important. Uh, also, phosphocreatine uh, can improve exercise capacity, which indirectly leads to increased muscular hypertrophy, which is just phenomenal stuff. Um, so again, if you're here right now, hit that like button. Let me know where you're from in the comments. Uh, got a, a quick question here. And part of why we do these live chats normally on Monday, today we're doing it on a Tuesday, is to answer your questions right here. So um, really uh, good information uh, coming here. Rambler says uh, creatine and vitamin D combo. Well, the reason why that might not necessarily be a good idea is because vitamin D is fat soluble. Creatine is a combination of three different amino acids, as you will soon learn. So you don't really want to take fat soluble nutrients with water soluble nutrients in general. Creatine is best absorbed around exercise and regular creatine supplementation, creatine monohydrate supplementation can increase muscular creatine stores by 40 percent, depending upon someone's baseline creatine levels. And so it's important to recognize that the time that you want to take creatine is before, during, or after exercise. Exercised muscle increases creatine absorption by some 25%. So when you're wondering, when should I take creatine? Before, during, or after a workout. Again, who is creatine for? Pregnant women, children who are exercising, any athlete, whether you're an endurance athlete or a resistance trained athlete, elderly people, people who suffer from cognitive issues, mood disorders. We know that creatine is involved in energy production, not only in the muscle cells, but in the brain cells as well. Really important stuff. Now, creatine and electrolytes work, work synergistically. We know that creatine enhances water uptake in the muscles, which is important for preventing cramps. Several studies have found that creatine supplementation can reduce the prevalence of cramp associated problems by some 60%. And we also know that electrolytes increase the absorption of creatine. So these things work synergistically. I'll share um, some more details on that with you very, very soon. But let's dive into this when it comes to exercise. Why and which type of exercise can creatine most beneficially affect? So as you can see here on the x-axis, what we have is exercise intensity going from left to right. You see the green zone one. Creatine's not really going to help so much with zone one or zone two, uh, sort of low intensity exercise, where creatine is helpful in the specific context of sports and exercise performance comes when people are doing high intensity interval training and weightlifting and sprint type movements. And this, my friends, is where you create the oxygen debt, where you actually increase some muscular damage to the cells and increase muscle protein synthesis. We know zone one and zone two and so forth are good for improving capillary density and possibly increasing fat oxidation. It's good to do some zone one, zone two training once or twice a week. But most of your training throughout the week should be in the zone three, zone four categories. And this is precisely where creatine has its benefits because high intensity exercise uh, actually has a lot of, uh, obviously a lot of health benefits, but that is contingent upon rephosphorylation of ATP. And that's where we're going to talk about some of the specific context when it comes to exercise. So when you're moving your muscles in an intense manner, what you're doing is you're breaking down ATP, converting it to ADP. What creatine does is it helps rephosphorylate ADP back into ATP. That's as complicated as this conversation is going to go. That's at the cellular molecular basis as to how creatine can help in the context of strength training and high intensity interval training. That being said, as we just alluded to, there are other off target effects beyond just improving ADP rephosphorylation within the muscle, thereby increasing the ability of the muscles to contract. As I mentioned, changing calcium dynamics. When you're using your muscles in the context of resistance training and also high intensity interval training, there's changes within calcium signaling within the muscular cells and within the, the, the myocyte itself. Also, replenishing glycogen synthesis is helpful. Buffering uh, hydrogen ions and lactate is helpful, uh, as well as improving the ventilatory threshold.
Okay, so really important stuff. I do just want to mention as we are uh, talking here, there is something that uh, many of you are are quite familiar with, and that is the electrolyte sticks by Myoscience. Just a quick small plug. Many of you know that we are one of the only companies in the world that has created a combination of electrolytes with creatine. That is the electrolyte sticks, and there's a new version of this available featuring real salt, albion chelated minerals like magnesium, you have taurine, you have potassium, small amount of calcium. All of those electrolyte and trace minerals help absorb the creatine and you have 2.5 grams of creatine per serving. Right now, if you want to, this promotion is going on through the end of May, you can buy one pre-sale and get the second bottle 50% off. This is a new 45 serving electrolyte sticks, which is one of the only creatine containing electrolytes that features real salt. A lot of companies that are selling electrolytes are using farmed sodium chloride. It's not stuff that you really want. You want the trace minerals from the real salt. You want creatine and the electrolytes. So I'll put links in the description below if you're interested. I, I saw some questions about, well, what creatine should I take? What product should I take? There's all sorts of creatine products out there. But again, the absorption of the electrolytes helps increase the bioavailability of the creatine, especially around exercise. And that's what I really want to get into because this is quite fascinating. We talked about who should take creatine. If you eat a lot of chicken for your primary protein sources, you're not getting sufficient dietary creatine. Creatine is found mostly in red meat and pork and also fish products. I'm not a huge fan of pork. You know, pigs will eat anything. You, I used to have backyard pigs. You've probably seen videos of these if you've watched the channel for a long time. Hogs will eat Skittles. They will eat humans. Uh, hogs are very indiscriminate. And remember, uh, what animals eat, you end up eating. So you want to have pasture-raised, grass-fed cattle and bison and the like for your primary protein sources, in my opinion, as well as cold water, fresh fish. And we know that those animal-based products are the primary sources of creatine. So if you've been a vegan, if you've been a vegetarian, if you've been eating a ton of chicken, you might have a creatine deficiency. And the problem with a creatine deficiency is it makes exercise less fun. People are weaker. They get more muscular sort of burn and have less muscular endurance, which causes people to not want to make exercise a priority in their life. And that's the whole goal here is to make exercise a lifelong habit, something that you do all the time. We also know creatine has been shown to improve cognition, uh, verbal recall, and memory function uh, as well. But I do just want to mention, friends, in these podcasts and in these live sessions, we cannot diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent diseases. We're talking about supporting health, and creatine is an essential nutrient that can do that. So uh, let's talk about uh, the different forms of creatine and what creatine actually does. I just want to read to you verbatim some things here. Uh, from one of the papers that I just referenced here. Creatine monohydrate is increasingly used in combination with resistant training to preserve or increase lean tissue mass and muscular strength in both young and old adults. Creatine is a unique compound synthesized from three amino acids with the first steps of synthesis from arginine and glycine in the kidneys and subsequent steps involving methionine in the liver. Consumed, uh, creatine is largely consumed from the diet, mainly from red meat, from pork, and from fish, as I mentioned. Now, how does creatine help with athletic performance in addition to everything I said? The scientists say the majority of creatine is taken up by skeletal muscle, where it combines with phosphate to form phosphocreatine. Let's pause here. What is phosphocreatine? Phosphocreatine is creatine bound with phosphate, as I mentioned, working muscles. You listening to this information right now, your brain is utilizing ATP and and financing those neurologic reactions or muscular reactions. And that phosphate group goes back, it, it, you know, it, it finances those reactions. And then phosphocreatine helps rephosphorylate ADP back into ATP. ATP is the cash currency of all mammalian biology. This is what helps you think, helps you move, gives you energy. What creatine does is it helps with that process. So it's a, it's a reserve of phosphate. So you just have more phosphate available within the cells, within the neurons, so that you can create more reactions and have better cellular energy. That's essentially what creatine is doing. That being said, as I mentioned, there's all these off-target benefits uh, from buffering lactic acid, from improving glycogen synthesis, from possibly increasing mitochondrial biogenesis, calcium, kinetics, and much more. But let's go on here. So the um, 
Let's talk about phosphocreatine. So phosphocreatine buffers adenosine triphosphate levels to improve high intensity exercise capacity, potentially allowing one to train with higher volumes during resistance training sessions. Creatine may also lead to cell swelling, increasing cellular water uptake uh, through water via osmosis, and this may activate muscle protein synthesis within the fibers. Creatine may affect exercise performance by increasing calcium reuptake in the sarcoplasmic reticulum, thereby enhancing myofibrillar cross-bridge cycling and force development. I know that's a lot of jargon, okay? Here's the visual. Again, you see uh, up in the, the very middle here, you see increasing calcium kinetics and how that might increase the myofibrillar uh, cross bridge cycling and force output, which is interesting. Okay, now I want to get into some of the myths. You know, people are uh, worried about uh, creatine and hydration. Creatine for women, isn't it bad and terrible for women? Won't it cause you to increase dihydrotestosterone? Creatine doesn't impact testosterone or hormones, but it has been shown to improve cellular water uptake and, and increase hydration. A lot of people are like, I don't want to take creatine because I'm going to get dehydrated in cramps. That's contrary to the evidence. This is a myth. Evidence demonstrate a 60% increase in muscle. Uh, I'm sorry, let me go back. Evidence demonstrates a 60% decrease in muscle cramps during hemodialysis with cre uh, creatine supplementation in a randomized double-blind placebo-controlled trial in both male and female subjects with end-stage renal disease. So it's important to recognize, everyone says, if you take creatine, you're gonna get cramps, and that's bad. Well, creatine can increase cellular water. So when you take creatine, you need to increase your water consumption because your cells are holding on to more water, specifically the muscular cells. In this study, the study found that creatine supplementation actually increases total body water by pulling water into the cell, which may have beneficial effects counteracting the extracellular shifts during the luteal phase of menstruation in women. So it turns out during the luteal phase, in, 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 during you know, menstruating women, there is a shift in cellular hydration and creatine might help therein. And so I just want to talk about that. The scientists say this is likely due to the molecular structure of creatine, which can be characterized as an osmolotically active substance, effectively pulling water into the intracellular space, exhibited by significant increases in intracellular fluid and total body water volumes in male subjects. The fluid shifts that occur with creatine supplementation have been uh, positively impacted thermal regulation and performance in hot and humid conditions. However, these outcomes have only been explored in male populations. And that's why this study that I'm showing on the screen right here titled a randomized control trial of changes in fluid distribution across menstrual phases with creatine supplementation. So I know that was a lot of jargon. What's the take home here for those of you that, that aren't you know, reading scientific jargon? Creatine improves cellular hydration and increases water uptake and skeletal muscle. So if you're taking creatine, you need to consume more water. And that's why I do recommend supplementing creatine with electrolytes because creatine helps with cellular hydration and electrolytes enhance creatine absorption. These things are like working like peanut butter and jelly. And so it's important to recognize that... Uh, that has uh, th that's the effect therein. Now, I do uh, want to continue to talk about creatine uh, for older adults and talk about this study right here. But again, if you're here right now and you're enjoying the content, be sure to hit that like button. I'm following your comments in the chat and I'll get to them very, very soon. But I do just want to highlight what this meta, this meta analysis of 28 different studies found when it comes to creatine supplementation in elderly subjects who are doing resistance training. Here's what the scientists say. They say previous meta-analysis have determined that creatine supplementation during resistance training is effective for improving lean tissue mass and some muscular strength measures compared with resistance training without creatine supplementation in older adults. Lean tissue mass and upper body strength, i.e. chest press and military press, were increased with high probability with creatine supplementation. Previous meta-analysis have determined that creatine supplementation during resistance training is effective for improving lean tissue mass. Oh, shoot, I, I put that there twice. Uh, and, and they say that part of the mechanism here is creatine may affect exercise performance, again, by increasing calcium reuptake in the sarcoplasmic reticulum, thereby enhancing myofibrillar cross-bridge cycling and force development. 
Um, so I think this is really important to recognize. And what they find, in particularly in elderly subjects, that creatine supplementation can increase phosphocreatine levels in the muscle by some 40%. So that's uh, really important uh, to recognize. Okay. Um, what I want to do is just get to your questions here. I've noticed a lot of questions. I'm going to just check on my phone, making sure that everything looks good. Someone says there was a typo. Uh, I'm not seeing a typo. Maybe there is a typo. Um, but let's get to some of your live questions. I just saw that in the chat. Okay. We got some folks from Ottawa here, Jacksonville, Florida. Um, Brad says, hello from Ottawa, Canada. Uh, Ontario, Canada. What are the dosages different for athletes versus someone using it for general health? Yeah, Brad, this is a great question. I think it depends on how much red meat you're consuming. If you're having like a pound of red meat per day, uh, maybe, you know, two to five grams of creatine uh, would be beneficial for you around exercise. Remember, um, creatine has largely been studied in isolation, but studies show that when creatine is paired with electrolytes, it increases the absorption. So uh, what we found, uh, you know, working with myoscience over the past uh, year since rolling out the electrolyte sticks that contain creatine uh, is folks are getting good results with just two and a half grams per day. Okay. Mark C says, interesting subject for myself. I have lupus, nephritis, and my kidney doctor checks uh, protein and creatinine levels. This is interesting that you pointed this out, Mark. What I've noticed in people who don't have enough muscle mass is their serum creatinine, which is not directly related to creatin creatine intake, can be quite low. So that's another proxy to sort of look at your uh, level of lean muscle mass. So that's important to recognize your serum creatinine. Uh, most of my male clients, I want that over one assuming they don't have chronic kidney disease. Alex T in the house says he is from Seaside, Oregon. Uh, great. Hopefully you're enjoying this nice weather uh, there, Alex. And he says, um, can hook you up with a surf rental if you ever like to try it with your family. Alex, I would love that. Um, drop your email in the chat. I will reach out to you. That'd be so amazing. Um, okay. Johnson uh, says, if an individual's opinion is financially motivated, look out, I'm gone. Okay, Johnson. Yeah, you can look. I'm sharing you with the science. Um, you can buy any creatine you want in, in the world. Um, this is just an option that is, is unique. But you, feel free to you know just go on Amazon, and buy creatine monohydrate. That, that's fine. Okay, which foods have a good amount of creatine? As I mentioned, red meat products are going to have uh, the highest amount of creatine. I don't recommend consuming a lot of pork products. We know that pork, um, as I mentioned, you know, pigs are monogastric animals, just like you and I. Uh, they eat a lot of soy, a lot of grains, uh, and I'm, I'm just not a huge fan of, of pork. Um, okay. Mark C says, what's your opinion on creatine supplementations for proteinuria patients? So patients that might have chronic kidney disease, um, I don't see a problem um, having creatine. Uh, there's been several studies in patients that are taking, uh, that are on hemodialysis and, and uh, have issues with kidney function. Uh, and creatine can in increase electrolyte uh, balance and water balance. Okay. Uh, are creatine supplementation really good versus real food? Uh, Raz, great comment. I think you should prioritize real food first, always real food. Um, but creatine in a supplement form has a more specific ergogenic benefit around exercise because we know that a lot of people are not going to eat a 6, 10, 12 ounce steak in the middle of their workout. It's a lot easier just to have it in a supplement. So important point here. Um, Edward says, much of the information about creatine comes from the 1980s when most powdered creatine was also sold with mi mixed dextrose. Yeah, this is really important to, to uh, recognize. Edward makes a great point. Uh, a lot of people were consuming a lot of creatine and a ton of dextrose, up to 80 grams of dextrose, which is not good. So important to recognize that uh, uh, a lot of that uh, misinformation and the myths created around creatine um, have, have challenges there uh, because of all of the sugar Okay, Caitlin says, how much creatine do you recommend for a teen girl? Uh, yeah, for an athlete, you know, like my daughter, she's pretty athletic, um, two grams, like two and a half grams, not a big deal. You don't need to uh, load up uh, children. And I think the whole, especially if you're eating red meat in the diet, the whole idea that you need to creatine load um, is probably not uh, something that you really need to consider, especially if you're having red meat in the diet. Okay. How many teaspoons is two and a half grams of creatine? I have no idea, Audrey. Look at the manufacturer. Um, 
two and a half grams is something that, um, you know, again, at, at myoscience, that's what we offer per serving. Um, and again, you can pre-sale. Uh, this is, we, we have the sticks available now. There's 30 servings. This is a new 45 serving. You buy one, you get the second bottle 50% off. Um, so that's going through the month of May. Um, so what else? Does timing matter? Yeah, I think timing does matter. Well, here's what, here's what the science shows. Exercised muscle increases the absorption by 25%. So for those of you that are worried about, am I getting enough creatine? Do I need to take 10 grams, whatever? Uh, take, take two to five grams and take it around exercise. You'll increase the absorption some 25%. If you add electrolytes or, or take it in a, in a combination with electrolytes, you're probably even getting another 15, 20, or 25% more on top of that 25% uh, around exercise. Okay. Uh, Revrot says, I did notice how I work out harder. Sprinting feels great. And again, that's a great comment by Revrar, uh, because if you look here with zone four, high intensity interval training, the creatine uh, supplementation and creatine in the diet has been shown to improve the phosphocreatine resynthesis uh, within the muscles and there, thereby increase work output and capacity. So uh, great, great comment there. Okay, um, Hugh, Hugh Mora says, uh, any contradictions for a 66-year-old male? I weight train three days per week? No. What would be the contraindications? Um, I would consume it around exercise. The only consideration is, remember, when you take creatine, your muscles will absorb more water. And so you need to consume more water, drink more water, and, and support your electrolyte balance. Okay, the TAC Room TX says, hi, I'm from Texas. I'm a 63-year-old female who is plant-based and learned a lot from you. Thank you for that. Um, have added this to my morning smoothie, five grams, which is great. Phenomenal. So we have men in their 60s, women in their 60s using creatine. That is awesome. What's the best juice to take with creatine? I don't want to drink sugar like Gatorade. You know, I'm not a huge fan of juice. I'm just not. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, eat the whole real fruit. I'm not a fan of juice. Most people uh, overconsume juice. Uh, don't recommend juice. Okay, Rebecca says red meat daily, four or five ounces. Uh, yeah, raw per day. I don't recommend a lot of raw meat. You can, of course, but uh, don't recommend uh, a lot of raw meat. Uh, I mean, unless you know exactly who grew your meat and when it was processed and the whole thing. Um so do I need to cycle on and off creatine, Derek? You know, but I don't recommend that. Now, we know that creatine might increase muscle hypertrophy and insulin-like growth factor one and block myostatin, all of which are beneficial. So do you need to, to cycle off it? I don't think so. I, I honestly think it's going to uh, help with muscle protein synthesis and athletic performance. I don't recommend cycling off it. Great question there. Though Alan says, I'm almost 60 years old. When I go mountain bike riding, my legs just scream and burn. Will creatine help? Alan, I would sure give it a shot. You know, mountain biking can be this zone four training. So absolutely. Um, as I mentioned, there's all sorts of creatine products out there. Uh, this one is highly effective. It's a combination product that also features electrolytes, which work synergistically and enhance uh, creatine absorption. So there's that. Uh, great question, though, Alan, and that's amazing that you're mountain biking uh, and you're in your late 50s, early 60s. Okay, we have another question. Hello, I'm a 61-year-old male uh, and weigh 200 pounds. Should I be aiming a little above five grams of creatine? Yeah, I think anywhere in the two to five grams is, is perfect around exercise. Um, I think most people don't need to take more. Audrey says, I joined late. Can you take creatine while fasting? I think creatine while fasting is a good idea because it can increase absorption of water in the muscle and prevent cramps and dehydration. So I do think it's okay. I'm not worried about it uh, changing in a negative way any of the physiology linked with fasting. Okay, uh, Brad has a great question. Can you get too much creatine if you're on something like a carnivore diet? Yeah, I mean, that's a good question. If you're eating like Sean Baker, you probably don't need to supplement with creatine. Let's be honest. But if you're eating a lot of chicken and eggs and things like that, not much red meat, you might want to consider creatine. But again, when should you take creatine? On days that you work out around exercise. Let's just keep it really simple, folks. Creatine is an ergogenic aid that can help with exercise performance. And that's when you should uh, consume creatine. Okay. Um, what happens if you stop taking creatine, do you lose muscle? Uh, that's a great question. I, you know, I, I think it's probably just fine if you stop taking creatine. Um, 
it's you could always go back on I, but i do think it is good periodically um to cycle these things uh, periodically take a break from supplements you go on vacation forget taking your supplements just take a little break that's fine but you're not just going to wither away um so i wouldn't really worry about that um how is your supplement created yeah so this is a great question Roz. um creatine is made by bacterial fermentation that's how that's how it's made um so yeah the synthetic process you know is creatine made from meat structurally different no remember creatine is just three amino acids um so it, it is uh created by bacteria um not too worried about the whether it's synthesized uh or or, or not now of course when you have red meat, you have creatine, you have carnitine, you have taurine, you have other carna nutrients that are in there, B12, zinc, all of the things. So there are going to be uh, different micronutrients found in red meat that may not be available in creatine supplementation. But that doesn't mean that creatine supplementation can't improve exercise performance. In fact, uh, all the studies that we've been talking about here show that creatine uh, unequivocally supports strength, muscular performance, and exercise performance. This is a, a, a one particular study in this meta-analysis of 28 different studies show that. Uh, Wild Rose says, if you look logically, why on earth would you take an isolate when nature? Yeah, great question. Why would you take an isolate when you can get it from nature? That's a good, that's a good question. How many people do you know that eat pasture-raised, organic, grass-fed meat on the regular basis? No. Most people are consuming processed grains. They're consuming boneless, skinless chicken that have been raised in a factory that have never seen sunlight or touched the dirt. They touch concrete. So a lot of people, with all due respect, are not getting some of these micronutrients, and that's where supplements come in. You don't have to take creatine from supplements, but when you take it around exercise, you have a better workout. We're trying to get people to have better workouts. That's the idea. When you, when you have more progress from anything in life, whether it's reading, exercise, playing a piano, you're more likely to continue with that habit doing that if you're not seeing progress you're going to quit and give up because you want to see iterative improvements in life and creatine is a low cost natural you know safe and effective product that uh, can help increase athletic performance and make people be more consistent with exercise that's the whole point of that Okay, Kat says, I was just thinking about trying your creatine I just ran out. I was wondering what brands are good. Uh, I've heard you were a regular exercising. It didn't matter when you took it. Yeah, Kat, so... Um yeah, I don't know what other brands are good. Uh, you know, I, like I said, no other brand is is pairing electrolytes with creatine like Myoscience. Uh, there's virtually no brands that are doing that. Um, there's close. There's over 500 reviews in the last year on this product just on on the website alone. So definitely check it out, um, and you can uh, save on that in the description below. Um, but creatine is better absorbed around exercise, so it does matter when you take it if you care about absorption, right? So um, I think that's important to recognize. Okay. Um, should you only use creatine made in America? I heard overseas creatine are laxed in quality. Um, yeah, great question. So there's there's really no, well, there's one domestic source here of creatine in, in Montana that is a crealkalin product. I don't, I don't generally recommend that, although I love Montana. Uh, but the crealkalin product is, um, you have to take a lot of that. It's a, it's a low potency product. Um, uh, most companies are doing third-party testing. So if they're using it uh, from Europe or Asia, it's being third-party tested and you're not getting a bunch of crap in there. So that's a great question. Uh, Sam Louis says, does creatine also function as a nootropic? Should a student be incorporating it as a nootropic? I certainly would consider it. Absolutely. Phosphocreatine in the brain helps with neuronal communication and cellular energy production. So if you're trying to improve cognition, learning, memory, uh, and mood, then I would consider creatine. Okay. All right. Um, Wild Roses says, and I drink between a quart and half gallon of raw milk per day for almost 40 years as well as still look in my 30s. Thank God. That's awesome. But think about raw milk. Are you getting this in a glass jar, right? Is there a microplat? I love raw milk. I do. But most people are consuming milk that has been homogenized, ultra pasteurized, which goes back to your original question, why should we supplement? Because we're getting endocrine disrupting chemicals, we're getting plastics, microplastic in our environment, and that's why supplements can be helpful. Okay. Um, Mike Basic says it doesn't matter when you take it. Um, 
Yeah, potentially. But as I said, it, it is increased. Uh, the absorption is increased some 25% when you exercise. So you're going to get more of it in your muscle if you consume it before, during, or after exercise. Okay, surely chicken is worse than pork and tropical wild-caught fish are much better than both. Bruce, great point. I agree with you 10,000%. Okay, need more zero says, I've been taking creatine daily post-workout. I didn't realize taking it pre and during workout would be more beneficial. Thank you. Yeah, that's just what the studies have, have been shown. Um, again, if you take electrolytes with creatine, you can enhance the absorption as well. Okay, uh, Sam Liu says, acutely, should I consider consuming 2.5 grams before tests? No, Sam, I would consume it uh, during the quarter, right? Build up your creatine reserves, not just before the test. It's probably not going to do anything right before a test. You'd want to build up your levels, uh, I would imagine. Okay. What do we have here? Uh, Marion Ray says, how much and when should you take creatine if you take it to primarily benefit the cognitive benefits? Um, again, Around exercise enhances the absorption. Take creatine when you go to go for a walk, go for a run, go to the gym. Great question. Montax says, can you just take a gram or two of glycine to increase the cognitive storage since depletion of methionine or methionine toxicity has been linked to longer lifespan? Uh, thoughts? Yeah, great question. You know, um, Montax, I don't know. I, I don't know the answer to that question. Um, I don't think... I love glycine too. Glycine can improve detoxification, uh, support sleep. Um, glycine has a lot of beneficial properties, but um, honestly, creatine is pretty affordable. I would just take, you can take glycine and creatine if you want uh, for under 50 bucks a month. So uh, great question from Derek. Derek says, so does creatine play any role in increasing testosterone? Um, yeah, you know, I, I don't think directly. I think indirectly. How can creatine enhance testosterone? Because you're having a better workout. Um, so by having better workouts, getting stronger, you might, uh, indirectly increase testosterone levels, but I don't think creatine directly increases testosterone. Here's a recently published, uh, study in all the different mechanisms of action proposed as to how creatine can improve, uh, human, uh, physiology, especially as it pertains to exercise. And what you see here is a buffering of lactate. You see, uh, improved glycogen resynthesis, phosphocreatine recovery, uh, increased calcium kinetics, which we talked about how that affects the muscle cell. Uh, decreasing uh, free radical stress, preserving fast twitch muscle fibers during high intensity uh, volume, high volume training. So by allowing uh, humans to work out harder for long, longer, uh, guess what? You can thereby increase testosterone level. Okay, we got a super chat here from Boost Your Biology. Thank you uh, for that. I really, really appreciate uh, that super chat, 299. Thank you for that. And thanks for the WhatsApp note. And I heard there's a new creatine out there. Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, most of the research is on creatine uh, monohydrate. So, um, yeah, interesting, interesting stuff. Um, okay, does creatine need to be cycled? We just talked about that. I don't think so. You could if you want. Just take it on days you work out. If you want to save money, you're like, I don't want to take it all the time, take it on days you exercise. Uh, which should be five days a week, four to five days per week. Um, great question here. Um, so friends, I'm just so grateful that you tuned in on a Tuesday. We normally do these micronutrient Mondays. I uh, had a lot going on yesterday with the family, just couldn't make it on, but uh, just wanted to share this with you today. If this was helpful and you're here live, just hit that like button. That just lets me and everyone else know that this content is helpful. If you have any additional questions, please let me know in the chat in the comment section. I always look at those. Uh, your input is very valuable to me. And last but not least, as always, I did want to mention uh, part of it is we're sharing science and also making solutions for you. Uh, the novel creatine containing electrolyte sticks have been popular over 500 reviews over at myoscience.com. You can pre-order and get the second bottle 50% off of this 45 serving container, which is a fantastic deal that is going to ship at the end of May. This is the only real salt combination featuring creatine and electrolytes. No other company in the world has put this combination together, despite the fact that there's many studies showing that when you pair electrolytes, you increase creatine absorption. We know creatine helps with cellular hydration. So this is a nice combination synergy over at myoscience.com on this new 45 serving creatine containing electrolyte powder. So great time to save there. 
Um, we'll do more deep dives on some of these other topics, friends. But again, thanks for hitting that like button. Thank you for being here. Hopefully you have a good exercise session. If you are exercising later today, remember, exercise increases creatine absorption some 25%. Um, and I'm just grateful that you tuned in and hopefully you got some value out of this. We'll catch you next Monday. I'm not sure if we're going to talk more about taurine or iodine. There was a lot of comments about more on taurine. Uh, and taurine has been shown to improve hypertension, decreasing blood pressure. So we might talk about that. But have an awesome rest of your day and we'll catch you next week. Take care all. Bye now.